Hi everybody out in YouTube land. What's good tonight? What's good tonight? Well, you know, the shtick. It's Fenhaven Friday. I haven't given up yet. And every week, I swear. Oh, okay. Anyway, let me pull up all the, click all the things here. I'm going to crack open a beer. Uh, give people some time to get in here. Here, this is what I'm drinking tonight. Michelob Ultra. In a bottle. Okay, let's see. I need to go click the things. Come on. Um, hi, Chase and Indy. How's it going? Good to see ya. Okay, keep hovering to play. Here comes my stream. Uh, you might hear me. Nope, I got the volume off. Slow, slow, slow. Yeah, bells and jars, hey. Huh. That's the theme we got next, but you know what? I will talk about it. I will go into that chapter. Let's see. And it's, it's, it is after the, you know, after the poem, there's that little paragraph, which, I, I, you know, I think is a part of the poem instructions. Um, and then it's dancing with the millennial millennium on page 135. And that's where, uh, those are the first instances of the bells. Um, okay. Let's see. Did I get, okay, wait, new pinned chat. You can now pin messages to the top of the Live chat for viewers to read. Click any message to pin it. Okay. Use the options menu to unpin. Oh, new feature. We've got a new feature this evening. <laughs> I'm working on my new hunt, Susie. Having fun making the art for my book. How are you? <laughs> like shit, for real? You wanna? Nobody wants to know, for real. Hi, JK Pioneer. Hi, Huli Ola. Hi, INFJ. So good to see you. And, um, Shats. K9 Treasure Hunter. Susie Q, is that you? Yes, it is indeed. Hi, Sledneck. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Hi, David. You know, I do have a great picture of a farmer in a field with a straw hat on and, but it's huge. Like if I, if, when I decide to show that art or talk about that piece of art, um, I'm going to have to, you know, film downstairs and not up here in my cave because it's too enormous to even bring down. It barely fit in my Jeep. I mean, I, a Jeep Crown Cherokee. It like took up the whole. Anyway, it's huge. Hi, Trusted Living. Good to see you. Hi, Lilla Stone. Happy birthday. Whose birthday? David? Old enough to know better. <laughs> Young enough to do it. Um... Who else is in here? Let's see. Okay, Larry. Cutie patootie. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Bells and jars seem to be the... I should have looked... Well, never mind. Doesn't matter. But, okay, so, um, so Ben was on earlier talking about the difference between the mentions of the bells and the jars or something like that, that is some caveat, but I, you know what, to me, it's, 
it's so hard to believe that anyone, somebody comes up with a jar, oh my God. That's even, it, see, see, at least there were clues to where the treasure was, right? Here we have no clues. It's like, let it, there, I see the chances of ever coming up with one of the jars or one of the bells are like nil. It would be incredible for someone to find, anyone to find one, um, but for someone in the community, find, I mean, there's no, what makes you think that that is a possibility? Uh, it says right here on page 138, I buried those bells three feet deep so a metal detector can't find them. Some may be on land owned by the American people, but tended by the Bureau of Land Management. Other bells have words that say, God will forgive me, that's what he does. And then the imagination is more important than knowledge. It doesn't matter who you are, only matters who they think you are. But there are others, or wait, there are others, but these illustrate my point, if not my logic. See, now here to me, and okay, I'm just going to read this whole little paragraph from page 138, Dance of Millennium. Millennium. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to show my scribbles. Because um, this is right where he says, but there are, um, <laughs> there are others, but these illustrate my point, if not my logic. Hopefully, no one will happen upon a bell for many years. Around 1,000 would be perfect. The Rosetta Stone was undiscovered for 2,000 years. And don't you know the guy who carved it is... Who carved it is proud. Um, see, now I took that um, to illustrate his point. He put the Chase Rosetta Stone on a bell and so like these those three phrases um are are illustrating his point which is our rosetta stone so how how you know i tried to and then there's a secret technique you know it, on the next page he talks about a secret technique um See, and here's the thing. Uh, uh, so on, okay, so on the bell, on the bell, he has imagination is more important than knowledge, right? And he says that, that it's on a bell. Over here, um, he has on a jar, imagination is more important than knowledge. And that's on one, his, on one of the jars. And that's... And what if no one discovers my art? Will my time have been wasted? I guess the reward is have been in doing it. The rewards have been in doing it. And the enjoyment that comes with dreaming about what might happen someday, no matter. It was more fun to run the risk of being foolish than to watch Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> uh, uh. Hi, Gadelkan. I just looked up and saw your name. Do you all, you all do know what is on the top of the bells on the top of the bells on the left hand page? Um, a way to hang the bells up. There's a name for it. I have it written down somewhere. 
And then this one, this very first one, it says the bell. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's a name for them that that thing, that bell thing, that cage, or whatever you want to call it, right? You tell them. They are pouring tubes. They're pouring tubes. Oh, okay. Um, Bill Gorman. Speaking of emeralds, I gave Forrest an emerald tablet. He loved it. Yeah, those are pretty, that's a pretty cool thing. Isn't that the whole Anunnaki blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Okay, where was I? What was I doing? You guys want to talk about this art before I go back into bells? Yeah, so why did he include that? So my, my theory always was why he included that bell chapter was a clue at how to decipher the poem was somehow using the Rosetta Stone uh, or the Chase Rosetta Stone, which would have been either... Uh, you know, like using the, those, somehow using the text on the bells to translate the, or, because there, that tombstone that he found, that's that tablet that he has in his hand on, oh my God, I used to know that page number. It's not, it's before page 99. Is it page 97? Now look, now I gotta know. Um, see, I can't hold a thought in my head. No, but it's not 97. It's before that. Oh, it's 95. I was one whole page off. And this is what I'm talking about. So the Rosetta Stone was basically a tablet. And, um, it had, it, and here there's, you know, and here's our, what was on our Rosetta Stone tablet, I call it. Um, and it's also because it was a French, a French soldier, a, fr a translation from French to English or English to French, whatever. There's a translation involved. And so that really made me think that it had to be. Um, you know, somehow the, between that text and the bells, it had to be like, that's how you used, I don't know. Of course, I never figured it out because here I am. <laughs> no chest. <laughs> no nothing. Oh, Okay. Okay, let's go back. Let's talk about this piece of art I have up here tonight. Um, this piece is the same artist as this piece. This is Gare Barks. And this is also Gare Barks. And what makes this one a special painting of hers is she doesn't do many, she hasn't, she never, she hadn't done many of her paintings um, include people. And this has a little boy and a little girl, and she's picking flowers along the... And, uh, okay, so... Okay, so you want to... And, and this one... Here's its, here's where all the info lies on any painting you ever get. Here's a... Uh, the canvas is 9 by 12, and it's called The Old Pepper Tree. And this was painted in 1967. This was her 18th painting that year. And, uh, 
Yep. I think this one's 1964 and this one's 67. But you can almost see it's like a, and this is a velvet, like this is a green velvet. Um, okay. Anyway, what are we talking about? No, oh, I had to get sidetracked because look, I'm, I'm a scatterbrain and I'm out of things to talk about because all this is too, well, there's Cynthia, Cynthia and her new video that came out today was like, it was so good to listen to hear Forrest again and, and hear, and I listened like twice in a row. As soon as it was over, I clicked again and watched, started watching again. Um, oh, have you noticed that F's and bronzes all have raised letters except one? It's engraved. Silver Fox. Yep. Good job, Silver Fox. Thanks for pointing that out, Huli. Um. Well, is it the dollar one? Ring the bell loudly for he who dies with over $50 is a failure. And he spelled dollars wrong. D-O-L-L-E-R-S. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maple syrup shots all down the bar. <laughs> is the chase slowing down, guys? <laughs> it's chase is over. <laughs> the only thing that slowed down uh, is any sort of uh, real information. came to a screeching halt it, well except for Cynthia today and that was great and anything that she can share you know it just it's a bittersweet thing because it's like I'm grateful that she is in a position that she's able to share you know for whatever reason that now is a good now is the time where it's okay to start releasing that you know and she's not on my timeline uh, definitely not because, uh, you know, this is stuff she's known for years and, and we're just getting to hear it. So it's like, oh, but in the same time, yay. But, you know, I can't help but feel it. Um, mm, I know this isn't about me. I know this isn't about me, but it's a feeling of, oh, am I jealous? Is it, I don't know if that's the right word either. It's a feeling of hope, or of, of this helplessness of, oh, uh-huh. It kind of just shoves you, shoves me right back in my place. It's like, you are nothing and nobody in this chase. And, and to think anything different um, is, is just like, boom, there you go, Susie. <laughs> you are nothing and nobody the people that are in it know exactly what's going on and know what's going on and have this information and have it for years and um and you know and that's fine i have to there's no not accepting it there is only accepting it's like okay i accept this and i and i am envious there we go of cynthia's relationship with Forrest that even though you know I felt close to him like I knew him and he knew me I felt like he was my best friend too and I never even met the guy so I can't imagine what Cynthia feels and of course she has a very important and distinct role in this and and uh I don't. 
And so I just have to wait like the rest of the, you know, or like everybody else, you know, it's like, and I'm sure there's people in here that are listening right now that absolutely are a part of that, that cog of that information, know more things and, um, but can't say anything or for whatever reason and, you know, just sit there. Forest is gone. All we have left is each other. I'm with you. Peace, Alan. That's right. Hi, Bobby Brass. Hi, Zozo. <laughs> Hi, Melinda Cash. How's it going tonight? Cynthia has a blow up with Forrest Fenn. Well, the way he, um, oh, there's our time, John, our time traveler. I may never speak of some things. Hmm. Sure doesn't seem fair. But there is no fair. There is no fair in love and war and treasure hunting. Isn't that how the saying goes? <laughs> Made a promise to who? Is That's the thing. Who are you promising? You know, come on. It's we the people. <laughs> you know? Uh, unless it was forest. Okay, I have to go off and I don't know how to where the button is for the shoot. No. 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 Uh oh. oh cancel. Oh now I screwed everything. Oh you guys. There it is. Then I couldn't figure out how to unmute. That's how that went. Here I am. I'm back. I'm back. I think I'll make some beef burritos. A beef burrito sounds excellent, Bill Gorman. Today was Chinese food Friday at my house. It was delicious. Beef and broccoli and pork lo mein. cream cheese wontons mm -hmm. who farted is who farted in here <laughs> uh, uh, uh. can't smell the smoke from here uh-oh, because from forest fires and stuff? Bobby Brass? What state are you in? New Mexico. I mean, like, Toby and Shelly, they had a show on Saturday. Seems That seems like so far away, like I can't remember what they talked about. But I do remember Toby telling Shelly that the like the forest fires were five miles away from where they where he lives it's terrible but you know what is like oh yeah yeah Bill I saw your dust storm video or part of it I watched and where you were showing that the mountains and that you couldn't even see them and it looked like rain but it's not rain it was dust um it's the same here in Minnesota where I am. It has been the windiest spring 
like ever. It's like so cliche for wind to, for spring to be windy, but it is beyond. It is like I, I can't remember it being this bad. Um for so many days, you know, it, not just like it yeah, it does get really bad. Yeah, yeah, whatever for a day or two. But it's been like consistently ridiculous the wind. And I thought we had a tornado the other day, but it was straight line winds. It was not even, it didn't even count as a tornado. And their trees just snapped off, just snapped. Evergreen trees with the tip snapped right off. And great big trees, like a giant, like pulled them out of the, by their, you know, just grabbed it and yanked them out. And, um, in just, in, in random areas of town or random spots right so i thought for sure it was a tornado by the amount of damage there was but no i guess it was just straight line winds but anyway it has just been crazy windy here as well and that does not help forest fires i know that and i know they're everywhere it was so windy here today and the sky was almost white from white sands wow I went through Las Vegas Thursday and it was thick that so thick you could cut it with a knife. Bill Gorman, is it true? Hi, back east. Is it true that you were told you were not the solver by Carl Sumner's while in New Mexico? Answer is no, he did not tell me that. But did he say Jack Stoof was the solver <laughs> or, or not, you know what? And, and the, the finder, um, whether he solved it or not. Well, you know what? There's another thing to talk about. Did he find the finder versus the solver? Um, and, but, but Forrest is the one who told us and it's in the court documents. If I'm not mistaken, did not Forrest, in a court document, say Jack Stoof followed the clues in his poem and went to his treasure. The actual Forrest Finn had said, has said, um, either it was in an article on Dale's, um, you know, when he announced the find on Dale's, and it was either that or it was... in a court document, or even both. It might have even been both places where he flat out said, Jack found followed the clues in the poem, solved the poem, followed the clues, and found the chest. Bobby, stop. Don't drink that martini. That jar has been open for five years. <laughs> Right, Huli, Huli, Bobby, no more. Imp um, I don't know what imp that word is. Did you listen to that, um, Bobby, that conversations video? Someone created a spoof account on Melinda Cash's account. Really? That's, oh, imposter. Impostering. Okay. Well, you think there would have been enough letters where I could have caught on? <laughs> uh, I followed a trail of bottle caps and string. <laughs> Very interesting. But Capro kicked us out. Capro kicked you out of what? You know what I've noticed so much since having um, experiences with Capro is is if you just watched Capro's and Mike's show, 
like Kalazar's channel, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't get the full picture of her. You wouldn't understand why people don't like her because she doesn't say boo about boo. She doesn't say anything bad while she's live on show with Mike. She, you know, the worst thing she'll say is, oh yeah, turds, you know, she doesn't, where she comes after people and what, where she turns that corner into it is when she is a keyboard warrior. She goes on other platforms, not YouTube, um, or YouTube comments, um, other places and uses her, wields her sword. Let's put it that way. And so it, you know, it's like, what? You don't get it. You're like, I didn't, I didn't understand for long because I don't go on Thor and especially people who are, I think who've been on Thor and, you know, like they've known that for a long time. It, it just had to happen to me um, to understand how, how she works. And, and it, not only that, you like, she'll, you know, say mean things and then uh, delete. <laughs> or I don't know, seems like it goes away then. So if you don't read what she writes, there's no harm, no foul, you know? Like if I don't, I don't go looking at Thor to hear, you know, or don't go on Facebook groups or Discord or any of it. Um, I think that's where things in, in, yeah. Why am I talking about her? Because, oh yeah, their show Monday. Um, well, yeah, it was just an observation because she's like, no, I'm taking the high road or I'm, you know, the way she, it's like, no, I don't go there. I'm not going there. You know, I don't do that. Well, but does Mike even know any, like any of the stuff that she really, you know, does and says? And, um, or does he just hear like, I don't know, that whole situation I find weird. Isn't, well, isn't that weird? <laughs> oh, oh, she can turn a friend into a foe and, and, you know, a few clicks of her keyboard. Mm -hmm. Which is fine because she's still, um, it doesn't, it, it, it really doesn't matter, uh, what she does to any of us or says, because she's still the one that seems to be the gatekeeper to, to, the information and as far as you know because she's cynthia you know she had to create a distance between her and cynthia so they picked a fight and then she did that same thing with candy then she did that same thing with me then she did that same thing with ben then she did that same thing with uh, all of them you know whoever she needs to create these distance this distance and uh, it's like why it doesn't seem I don't know. It seems very fabricated. A lot of this, these reactions and these little side ventures. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Oh, Slidneck, you on that list too? <laughs> oh. But I was going to, God, I could, there was a particularly disturbing video that was, it was me. It was a live show where her and Adam, Adam Foddy, they just joined me, right? Uh, you know, and it was just, we were just having a good time. Joined me on a live show. It was late. We all were drinking, whatever, having a good old time. But all of a sudden. Or, or I, I don't know. I can go. I said it on private. It's on private. You can't watch that video now. 
because after it happened, I was so horrified that I did set it on private. But at this point, I probably could turn it back to public um, and let, you know, just the way she was questioning me and, and talking to me, it was like listening to it now. It's like, wow, really? This is a doctor? <laughs> this person has her doctorate? And, you know, she was trying to lead me into saying that I was prejudiced against people from India. And, or uh, she was trying to say, you know, like, the chest is getting sold to somebody in India. That's who bought up, um, um, bought up his other art. And so, you know, and they're super wealthy and they're going to, they're going to just buy the chest and we'll never see it. And, you know, it was like this, it was like this, I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. That's doesn't and like, why not? What's wrong with people from India? You know, it's like, no, <laughs> oh God, should I just play it? Because no, why, why am I rehashing that? Just because it was so odd the way I was treated by her during that segment. Um, she was trying to confuse me or frustrate me or do so, like some, like why? What was that? And maybe if I shared it all with you guys again and had you listen, maybe you can help me sort out what in the hell was that um in my whole point of the thing you know she was trying to say that i was prejudiced against people from other countries and my whole point was i don't want the chest to leave that this is our national treasure forest is our our treasure the united states the rocky mountains that's our treasure yellowstone is in our country and and so should forest treasure chest be you know that was my point of it and she's like oh so you don't think anyone else should deserves to have you know what about somebody from japan or whatever you say it's just like and, and i know she's not stupid i know she absolutely understood what i was saying but yet was trying to to you know and she purposefully messing with me and there's no other way to put that um so I, I it's a hard look back when when seeing how far how much she's but yet she's our oh i'm gonna take a deep breath and have a swig of this semi-warm Michelob Ultra. <laughs> Hi, Vertigo. Here he goes. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> Is your other name Dizzy Dean? <laughs> Um, it's more complex than that times 10,000. Uh, hi, Sparky Sparks. Hi, Lucky Digger. K-Pro picks fights when she drinks. Is it as simple as that? Is it really as simple as that? Hi, Carrie Galloway. Hi, Davey. Uh, I haven't seen Cynthia's video. I should have. I should have seen. Um, I should have asked Cynthia if it was okay to show it. Or oh, I, well, yeah, I could show it on this computer with this. Uh, I'd have to do some fancy maneuvering <laughs> because I don't have Zoom where I can share a screen any longer. Hmm. Anyway, let's not talk about that icky stuff. Let's talk about the good stuff. Um, Cynthia's video. Somebody did say in Ben's chat that 
which I did kind of feel bad too for for like the way Forrest was talking to the interviewer or the inter yeah the interviewer he's the interviewee um but I did feel bad for her for a minute the way he was trying to lead her or or you know I don't know what he was trying to get her to say uh but he seemed like he was real short with her at one point it was kind of like cringy a little bit but it was so nice to hear him you know pre-chase and did we know when this is from can I go look at Cynthia's? I'm going to go look at Cynthia's. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Come on. Why won't this work? There we go. Does she say? Okay, here it is. Um, let me see. Show more. No. So do we do we know when this was recorded? What's going to happen if I play this? Yep, there she said it. That's what we got. Whoops. He said buried. Okay, there. Oh, keep going. Twenty sixteen New York Times interview. Okay. Thank you much, Cynthia. So 2016, why didn't we get to hear all this? Because was it just irrelevant? Because the article, um, okay, now I need to go find my own video again. Channel, um, you know, was it that she, Uh oh, I got I forgot to turn my volume off so things could go wrong right here. Just hang on a second. Okay, good. I got it before it came up. Um. Okay, so what were we talking? Okay, so in 2016 is when that happened. She was present at that interview. I'm assuming, and did she not? Uh. film it herself as well or how did she get this video i mean oh thanks huli huli put a link into the new york times um article Yeah, and Forrest more than once said buried, you know, and then he corrected himself. Well, I don't want to say it's buried and because it really wasn't. It was kind of buried, but not really. I wonder what that nook, <laughs> bunny ears, looked like to begin with because I he never said he'd drug a you know, dug anything like he, it, it, that hole seems like it would have had to been there because, um, you know, unless he'd been working on that spot for a long time and previously bought a shovel and made, a made it, you know, 
five inches deep exactly and you know or did he just really shove it in a spot that was and then it got water or you know the spring runoff came and it, it evened it all out so it you know it, it filled in the crevices around it and then the crap blew over it the the leaves and what is it detris is that the word <laughs> Hmm. Buried means he put it, he put dirt on the top. And I don't think he did that. He did. Yeah, good point, Lucky Digger. He set it in a hole, but he didn't bury it. You know, I think that he did get away with saying it wasn't buried just because of that reason. And he just let nature do the rest. Just oof, whatever happens, happens. And But the blaze is obviously going to be your marker. Uh, but not really because for, or for, Jack said he found the chest, looked up, and saw the blaze. So what? What? What does that mean? Oh, man. And why can't Jack, why doesn't Jack show us the blaze or tell us what the blaze was as if it was a mark on a tree, a uh, mark on a rock, a uh, mark on a, the horse on the page, with, you know, finding Lewis and Clark. What, what would be the harm in that? Um... I don't know. Hi, Packer Jack. The Milwaukee Bucks just violated the Chicago Bulls in the playoffs, 111 to 81. Whoop, whoop. Got some money on that game? <laughs> oh, it was so fun. Um, my sister took me back down. We went back down to Iowa on, what, when was that? Was that Monday? It was Monday, day after Easter. Um, she had a day off work. She works ass off. Anyway, um, she took me down to Iowa to the casino that we got that where she bet on the Masters golf game on Scotty Schiffler for the win. <laughs> And he won. It was really fun. We got to go there um, Monday and cash in the ticket for 280 bucks. She was like, I still don't believe it until until we go there and go to the people and cash it in. And the lady's like, yep, it's $28. <laughs> that was great. And so she gave me, she gave me a hundred dollars. And um to play, to walk around the casino and play the slot machines. And it was so much fun. And we ended up staying there like two hours, a couple hours. And, um, we both walked out with the hundred dollars, uh, the hundred, you know, a hundred dollar. I still had a hundred dollars in my purse when I left after I played all those hours, I went up and down and it was so much fun. And what, a, you know what, that's such a never Neverland. The casino is like a. It's a good thing I don't live closer to a casino because it's such an escape from reality. It's like the time feels different, money feels different. Everything is just like a. You know, like it's. It's easy just to lose time and <laughs> lose money. Um at a casino, but it's entertaining and thrilling and fun. And I, and I got to, you know, win this and that. And, you know, I don't know. You guys all know what I'm talking about. There's a bar there too. I could have had some beers and, you know, but I, I didn't. I, but anyway, Good times, good times. 
Yep. And she works hard. So when she wants to go to the casino, she can do whatever the hell she wants. <laughs> you know? <laughs> she always knows if she wants to bring me with, she's got to pay because I, I am the broke. I'm broke. And that's how it is. And she always takes care of me. And it's great. Me and my sister have fun. We usually laugh our ass off on the way there. Okay, you guys. What do we got here for time? 9.50. Okay, I'm going to crack this other beer. I brought one more up here. Okay, we're going to go back to the bells and jars. Uh, Really? What? what? Okay, so... I know... You know what? I didn't see that. Uh, I, I missed the beginning of Ben's show. I came on. I, I didn't realize he was on till 45 minutes into his stream. And by that time, Alan was on. And so I don't know what he was talking about. But he was like, see, he he picked out something in the Cynthia Cynthia's video that she had just dropped that gave him a, a idea that uh, that the jars were, were findable. And I don't know why, what, what makes you think? Because he, Forrest said himself that he wouldn't, he couldn't even go back and find where he hid those things. And, you know, and, and it, it's, it's, it's bigger than a needle in a haystack. I mean, it's, it's, a, uh, it's like, I can't see this as a possibility unless there's a marker directly over it, you know, like dig here, <laughs> bell here. Um, because I have my theory too, where one of these bells or jars, can, you know, like, okay. Uh, in Santa Fe, just north of, uh, is where Eric Sloan's house in the desert. And it's called El or Campos. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the... But it translates to the bells. It, the, where, where Eric Sloan lived. Um, that whole gated community is called the bells in Spanish, whatever the Spanish word for bell is. And so when you pull up to this gated community, um, you have to pass a bell tower. There's a bell tower right there while you drive to Eric Sloan's house in the desert. And he, he has this beautiful mansion sitting on all this land that backs up to nothing but the desert that goes all the way to the... Rio Grande, right? Nothing but desert. So, um, in in my eyes, if absolutely did Forrest bury a jar or bell or both or whatever on Eric Sloan's property out in the middle of the desert, out in the middle of nowhere, where it's no longer supposed to be, uh, what do you call it, developed? But he's like, someday, somebody's going to develop that land probably all the way to the Rio, Right. So I'm sure um, somewhere out there behind Eric Sloan's house is a jar or a bell. It just has to be. Um, and in Taos somewhere. And and he owned the um, the fashion. Uh, Didn't he buy the house that, not fashion, but the other one, um, and Eric Sloan lived with him. He lived in his chicken coop, he lived in his guest house, and it was those two artists, and it was in the 1929 and 1930, and, uh, Gaspard, thank you, Huli. Thank you. Um, but Forrest Venn ended up owning Gaspard's house and in in house and that property piece of property i don't know where it is now or who owns it now or whatever happened to it now but 
wouldn't that be another great place to look for up you know if that's the way you're gonna you know out oh, but just to say uh oh yeah forest fed i'm gonna look for uh you know there's obvious other places like like the the main entrance into yellowstone or or the roosevelt arch entrance the north entrance gardener um that would be a great place to hide one of his bells or jars but how would he ever get away with that how would you ever be able to dig right that you know right by someplace like a landmark like that and and get away with that you never would it's not there it's not going to be there but what i do like about that whole idea and story is when they were building the post office in Gardner, Montana, right outside Yellowstone, right across the border from Wyoming, um, when they were digging the footings for the post office, they found a bunch of Clovis points, a Clovis point, a very important Clovis point or several Clovis points. Um, I can't remember how the story goes. Bill knows the story. And... Um, and, and so when Forrest talked about, you know, when they're going to be digging some footings for a building, they're going to come across my jars or my bell or whatever. And a thousand years, two thousand years from now, um, it, it was really reminiscent of that story because I think he might that I wonder if that was a part of the Fen cash, the Clovis cash that he had, you, and, you know, the most important collection of Clovis pieces in the United States was owned by Forrest Fenn. I don't know where they are now. Um, <laughs> Doug, <laughs> are the bells something unrelated to the jars or are the bells in the jars? Confused in Colorado. <laughs> uh, well, they're two different things. Here are the jars. He made bells and jars. Here are the oh, oh, there went care barks. Okay. And these are the bells. But he, he created them at the same time. And he does treat them in this story. Um <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Uh, he doesn't, tr he treats them in the story definitely in two different ways. Um, he talks a lot about the bells and then he goes into, uh, I'm also burying bronze jars for the same reason, about eight in all. My friend Tommy Hicks owned the, um, Shadoni Foundry didn't know how to cast jars with screw-on lids, so I had to teach him. It's a secret technique that I discovered when I ran my own art foundry many years ago. The same autobiography that's in the treasure chest is also in the jars, which are decorated mostly with dragonfly or frog designs. Frogs are kind of my specialty because I like to fabricate long legs and buggy eyes in the soft wax. Um... Oops. Is that okay? Everybody okay? Everybody. Uh, which book is this? It is this book. The Thrill of the Chase. And it is page. It's after. It's right after the poem. It's Dancing with the Millennium. Let's see, here's the poem. Here's the next page. And it's all about the jars and bells. And, um... And then the sledgehammer bells, the sledgehammer bells, that got me, because Thor carries a sledgehammer, right? And, he, you know, praying to Thor and, um, but that's what got me to the ringing rocks in Butte, Montana, right outside of Butte, Montana. Um...
there were so many things in this Dancing with the Millennial that led me to Butte, Montana and the Ringing Rocks. Um, there's only two places in the United States that this is a phenomena where there is a giant pile of huge boulders, you know, like boulders that are like six feet across. I mean, they're giant boulders and, and, and the, the pile of rocks is enormous and weird where it is. It's just like, what happened here now? But anyway, you, there are actual, it's, a, it's on BML land and you have to drive back and they're on the, the roads that are, are for four wheel drive or, you know, off-road vehicles and stuff. But anyone can go back. A car could make it back there. When I went, I don't know what the conditions are like now, whatever. Um, but you get back there, it's kind of a hairy drive. And um, there's, in the middle of the nowhere, are these pile of rocks. And there's actual a sign about them that explains it that, you know, for tens of thousands of years, these rocks have been here, blah, blah. And uh, there are hammers that are hanging there. And you can take one of the hammers down and hammer on the rock, and it rings just like a bell. People have taken the rocks away from the pile, and they no longer have the property. They don't ring any longer. They only ring when they're all piled together. Well, sledgehammer bell is those ringing rocks. But anyway, uh, what was I saying about that? The pinging sound of his pounding hammer against the iron and anvil was thrilling to me in a romantic sort of way. It had a certain cadence that was an integral part of the total experience. It's like, wow. And then right after that, I'm looking at page 136 in Dancing with Millennium, um, is that, uh, anyway, I've always been willing to stand idly by, I've never been willing to stand idly by and be a part of forgotten history when I was able to impact future events. My part will be very small in the big picture, but huge to me. Safe upon the solid rock, the ugly house's sand. Stand, come and see my shining castle, shining palace built upon the sand. Hmm. You know, so it's just, I don't see, well, well, looking through this chapter again, just these few pages of this chapter, um, the only clue about where a bell could be buried is Bureau of Land Management. That's like the only narrowing factor for finding a bell. He doesn't say boo about any, not even close to, he didn't say I'm, I'm burying my jars on Bureau of Land Management. He didn't say that. So we, these could be private property, um, anywhere. But how some of them on land, some may be on land owned by American people, but tended by the Bureau of Land Management. Hmm. The only thing about that is, well, everything changes because will the Bureau of Land Management still own that land in a thousand years and two thousand years? Is that still going to be by the American people and nobody yet will have dug a footing and found it? Um, I don't know. But there's not a chance that I'm ever going to consider looking for a jar or a belt because it's not, 
it's not meant, I don't think they're meant to be found. And I don't think it's possible. Two reasons right there. But by all means, don't let me stop you or my opinion. Because by God, wouldn't you be the bell of the ball? If you did <laughs> come up with one of those items. Boom. Way to skirt the issue with Jack. Screw you and not telling us what's in that olive jar. We'll just, uh, I got it myself. Found my own. You know, there's a certain thing. But, you know, to actually put thought into like, yeah, I'm going to put a grid down and get some ground penetrating radar and uh, start looking for metal. Oh, my God. There's too much, too much. It's impossible. A whisper poster video. Very odd. Is that right, Goodell Khan? Just now? I'm going to click on your link. Hmm. It's pretty slow. Is this an 11 second video? Hmm. Eight views. April 22nd. Yeah. Do I get notifications from her? Oh, I'm subscribed, but don't have notifications turned on. Okay, I'm turning them on. It won't let me. Why not? Are Oh, are these set for children? Uh, show more, show less. It doesn't say anything. It just shows Forrest behind his house by his um, wagon. Okay, I'm going back to where I was. Um. Yeah, what was the point of that? Did she say anything? Hi, little engine that could... How you doing, Tyler? Um, this game sucks. <laughs> uh, have any jars? Bells or jars been found? No, never. As far as we know. I say, <laughs> your chance of finding one is going to be the same whether you are a forest fan treasure hunter or not. And your odds are like zero. Kids need dreams and heroes. Yes, they do. Um, I'm doing fine. Uh, just been doing me for a week now. It seems everybody from the Chase community misses their boy, Luke Frederick Hines. Who's that? Who's that? I don't get it. Am I missing an inside joke? Hi, ES. What'd you miss? Not a thing. I know nothing about nothing. Just my opinions. Having a beer, hanging out with friends, you know. Ever want to go to a museum and be denied because you are poor? Well, museums are 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 intimidating because of you know they do seem like they're for rich people. I love art, and I am 
poor, poor as they come. When I get married to my soon-to-be fiance, Adeline McKinley Hines, I'm changing my name to Luke Frederick Hines. Oh, you're going to take her name. Like you're, like, I'm so confused. <laughs> okay, that's fine. You can reinvent, reinvent yourself. So is Tyler just your nickname then? Miss out all the time because I'm poor. Yes. I know what it's like daily. Hi, Chris Merchant. My opinion is the chest that Jack acquired is fake and the real one is still out there. I'm still looking. Very interesting. There are a certain uh, amount of people in the chase that um, think that same way as you. I'm looking at my, that looks better. Um, that, that believe that there's a second chest or, or what did you say? Is fake. And, you know, yes, the mystery there. And that whole tie into the, the, um, what do you call it? Um, the website, that website, buy the chest website, whatever that's called. Oops. Oh, my camera's melting, sinking. What happened? Okay, never mind. Um, now my attention went, what? I decided that impressionist art is a scam. <laughs> I love impressionist. I do. Look at there it goes slight. There it goes again. Oh no. Things are wrong. There we go. There. We're stable now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right, Susie. Oh, man. Uh, uh, it was flawed and the letters are backwards in the picture Jack and Fen showed us. Well, are you sure it's just the picture not backwards? Not not the actual chest, but just the photo? You know what I'm saying? Hi, Kevin. Forrest Fender is a great salesman. There's a great, that, that's a really good point, Kevin. Because one of the takeaways from the Cynthia's video that she dropped today was he asked, what is the biggest industry in the world? And she's like, I don't know. Tell me. When he goes, well, it's probably all wrong, but I'm just guessing. You know, Forrest says, advertising. Um, there's ads on everything. There's ads on your shoes. There's ad on your jacket. There's ad on, there's ads everywhere you look. You can't escape it. It's, you know, they're selling a brand. Um, And his whole obsession with that full page color. And it's all about advertising. You know how to succeed in, in any game you do is advertise and get your information to the right people. And there you have it, you know. Um, so uh, what was your point? Yeah, he's a great salesman. Don't be surprised if there are more, more to the chase than a chest. 
so right. There obviously has to be, for God's sakes, please. <laughs> no. um, there's got to be more to this. That is the chase. <laughs> Grocery prices are sky high now. Oh my God, don't get me started on that. I swear to God, I'm an 80-year-old woman because I I cannot not comment on every price. Holy shit. I was with my sister today when she filled up her, um, her car. Uh, she has a Jeep Grand Cherokee. She had a quarter take of gas. The gas light didn't even go ding yet. It didn't even tell her to go get gas. She just did a quarter tank. And it took $70. $70 to fill it. It's like, oh my God. That's a whole month budget, gas budget for me. That's like, that. oh my God. And that's one tank. It's a good thing that I don't, have to drive anywhere. I don't drive anywhere, rarely. Just put around town, but um, yeah. And then I went and bought, I went to go get garbage bags and a 12 pack of pop and uh, blueberries. And I just had this short list of a few things at the grocery store and I could I bought a six pack of pop because I couldn't bring myself to buy a twelve pack of pop because it was six dollars and fifty cents for a twelve pack of pop. I was like, oh my god. What? Garbage bags. The generic brand of garbage bags were eight dollars and fifty cents. Oh my god. Those same garbage bags were five bucks. Those were five dollars. Now they're eight fifty. Uh, 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 I can't. Every time I come back, I'm just shocked. I'm. I was gonna grab a box of crackers. I couldn't even bring myself to put my cra the crackers in the basket because they. It was like three ninety nine and four ninety nine. The the price of a box of crackers. Oh, I'm like, oh my god. What are we gonna do about it? Went it, it it happened just so fast. It is shocking. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Five twelve in Las Vegas Thursday. They oh seventy bucks is a half tank. Oh my god. Yeah. Two sixty nine for a bottle of water at the fuel stations. <laughs> but you know what? I can still buy a bottle of wine <laughs> for three dollars. You can buy a whole bottle of wine for three bucks. And it's good wine from like Spain or Argentina. Can't remember, but it's good wine. Um, $3 a bottle, but damn, a 16 ounce bottle of water is going to be about the same price. No wonder. I, I mean, I'm drinking bougie tonight. I'm having this bougie beer right here, Michelob Ultra. And uh, I felt rich because it was... Sixteen, $17 for a 12 pack, $17 for a 12 pack. I'm like, okay, I can have a four day of two beers a night <laughs> for the next, you know, oh, next six days I get two beers a night. That's not going to work, but <laughs> I can pretend. <laughs> I can bitch about you know, necessities in life, gas, Wine, food, and garbage bags. <laughs> Don't get me on toilet paper. My God, just the one that can fit inside a gar it sit fit inside a grocery bag. 
just that big of one, $9. <laughs> okay, old lady Susie, shut up now. Let's get done. Uh, hi, Brian Gates. Did I say hi to you already? Mick Ultra. Yeah. Uh, drink a Monster Mocha. Yeah. Arizona tea. 99 cents. Gotta take... You can't get a damn chicken. Oh, my God. All the chickens are dying now, too. And now eggs are three twenty five dollars for the cheapest eggs at Aldi. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's almost spring. I'm going to need to plant my garden. Got to get the green beans in. As soon as it gets warm enough here, get some vegetables in so I don't get get the real tomatoes going. Some cucumber, a couple zucchini. I suppose they're going to want like $10 for a bag of seeds or some crap. Good thing I'm a seed keeper. <laughs> I'll have to dig out my, you know, the forbidden seed keepers. Um, uh, Aldi is for Joe Mama. <laughs> Aldi is where you buy all your fruits and vegetables because they're at least a dollar cheaper than anywhere else. Yeah. No, all these awesome. And plus they have really good chocolate. European chocolate. Hell yeah. And I just live in a small town and we have an Aldi here. So yay. The war is now. My wife, my wife went to Costco and, uh, rationing dog food oh my god have you seen my boys they eat a lot <laughs> well if you can find like we got one tiny little cat my sister's cat and um he's just an old skinny kitty and his food the thing is with him they don't have the shelves aren't stocked you can't get they're you know the the shelves are bare. The cat food aisle <laughs> doesn't have many choices, and try to tell him that you can't have your favorite kind because the supply chain is screwed up. He don't care. He will just poo poo it and not eat it and let it get crusty and then make you give him something else. <laughs> yeah, so it's cat food shortage. Poor animals. When people can't afford to feed themselves, they can't afford to feed their animals. And everyone should be able to afford the animal. A kitty or a puppy. They're good for mental health. I shop predominantly at all these, says Huli. Uh, and I know, and Aldi, I wish it, and I don't even get my wine at Aldi because we don't, in, in Minnesota, the grocery stores can't sell wine and alcohol. They don't get to sell alcohol. They have to have a special permit and each town has only so many permits and it's like a big damn, oh beer Nazis. We, I live in, I live in Minnesota where there's beer Nazis. You can buy, you can buy beer at a, at a convenience store, but it's three, two beer, meaning it's not, it, no matter what kind of beer you buy, it's 3.2% alcohol. So you, or if you go to a real liquor store, um, 
then it will be whatever the real beer is. But they have to make special beer just to show up in the convenience store. I mean, it's so silly. Who made these rules? It's just, it's just really is painful. Hi, Bubba Gump. I see you jumped in. Um, weaponized autism. Weaponized autism. Don't know what that means. The thing I don't like about Ollie is the brands they have. I don't know them. I know, and you know what? It's a crapshoot, Kevin, because some things are really delicious, and you're like, oh, my God, this is great. This is better. That I had no idea I even liked this, right? And some things are funky. Like, I don't like their tortillas. Their Mexican sec their whole section is not uh, my favorite, but they have other things that are just like, you know, and they have fun frozen food. It's, you don't know what it's going to be. They have stuff that comes in like special, whatever. So that's always fun. Like looking around, see what kind of weird new food that they have in for the week or whatever. Yeah. Hi galaxy. Would love to talk with you about some theories. I would love to hear your thoughts. Hey, Galaxy. That would be great. When do you want to do that? Next Friday? Um, brand names don't matter when you're broke. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever you can get for... You know, and that makes me feel sorry for people that don't know how to cook or never learned how to cook or don't have interest in cooking. So they never, um, you know, it's harder for them to take care of themselves. They have to buy pre-prepared food or processed food or, you know, that's one thing I am grateful for is that's something I really like to do. Uh, and something I'm really interested in is preparing my own things, you know, my own food. And so... um I think I get to eat better than a lot of people or a lot of younger people that aren't, you know, it's like, what do they eat? The poor kids, you know? <laughs> and when I say kids, I mean like the kids that are, are, are you know, the 20 year old people now that, that are just leaving and starting their own houses and, and learning their, you know, it's like, oh my God, to be young in the current environment that we have now, seems horrifying to me i don't know you know it seems harder mung beans yeah you can Gourmet, gourmet. <laughs> Can you share a scenario? Sounds like a Marvel movie. Tractor Supply was awesome food. Tractor Supply has awesome food. Sourced and made in the USA. Well priced. Interesting. Hi, Gigi. You okay? Where? I didn't see. I'm out. Uh-oh. Wonder what went wrong. Um, okay, you guys, but you know what? On that note, I'm gonna be out too. Look at I'm gonna make it one more minute to 10 30. I came on nine o'clock right on the get right on the nose. Sorry I didn't schedule it and uh because I go through it every time I go through that whole thing. It's like I'm too tired. I'm not gonna do my show tonight. And then my sister looks at me and rolls her eyes and says, yes, you are. You can't just call in sick. <laughs> oh, She's like, I never call in sick. You can't call in sick either. And I'm like, okay, this is, I can play along. 
Okay. But that's it, people. I'm going to go ahead and push this button. And then you know what? Um, Because I, I'm live from my phone, which is so wonderful that I can do that again now. Um, But I have to go back into the settings because it, it's going to set it private. So right away, you're not going to be able to see this until I get... I'm able to get in there, get to the settings, and set it for public. And that's just how it, it is. And I assume that's because I have less than a 1,000 subscribers, but whatever. So far, it's working. It's great. Fine. Uh-oh. Bubba Gump was... Um, I heard Galaxy is Eric Parker. Spider-Man? It was fun talking with all you guys, and thank you so much again for um, for sharing your, your Friday night with me, and I'm going to push buttons, okay? See you next week.